This is Andrea Watson. I'm a research assistant professor at the University of Nebraska here in Lincoln. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about corn silage today, specifically in growing diets. So really, it's very important what type of protein we put into growing calves' diets, whether that's uh, soybean meal and urea blends, or if it's bypass protein. So distiller's grains is kind of my go-to uh, recommendation for bypass protein. Really, we're seeing uh, differences in average daily gain going from about three pounds per day with urea or degradable protein up to over three and a half pounds per day when we're doing distiller's grains type of uh, supplementation. I have here two different uh, trials that we went ahead and combined and uh, you can see that uh, we see a linear increase in average daily gain even with these really high levels of bypass protein supplementation. So even out here at almost approaching 5% of the diet as bypass protein, we're still seeing linear improvements in average daily gain. Now just to put this on a, a more uh, what does this mean level? So at 3.2% RUP in the diet, that would be similar to including about 15.5% distiller's grains in these diets. As we go out even further and include up to about 5% RUP or bypass protein in these diets, uh, that approaches about 27 or a little bit higher percent distiller's grains in these diets. So these diets that we've tested are simply uh, almost entirely corn silage and just replacing that with distiller's grains to get some improved performance. One other interesting thing that we've seen with uh, some of these diets would be uh, taking an interim weight after about 30 to 40 days, so about halfway through some of these growing trials, and we see that uh, requirements for protein really change over the feeding period. And so uh, the first 40 days on a growing uh, trial or the first uh, about 100 pounds that those calves are putting on, so going to five or 600 pounds up to 700 pounds, that period is really important. That's when their metabolizable protein requirements are the highest, and that's when we really have to be careful to formulate diets uh, to meet their protein requirements. And so uh, the, when we formulate diets, it's important not to formulate diets for the average of the entire feeding period, but instead to formulate diets for each and every day. We need to meet those requirements each and every day, with the, the requirements being the highest at the start of the feeding period. Now when we're uh, trying to meet requirements, it's really important to know supply of these nutrients. So you have to know supply in order to know if we're meeting those requirements or not. It gets a little tricky when we're talking about corn silage to know how much of the protein within the uh, corn silage is actually degraded in the rumen and how much is bypass protein. And so uh, we've been doing some uh, different lab work to try and break that down. Now most of our lab procedures are for either uh, forages or concentrates. Corn silage is a bit of a challenge because it's a blend of the two. And so we've uh, done some different procedures to try and get a better handle on what the actual uh, bypass protein value is uh, in this corn silage. And really, uh, the number that we're using right now is about 22% of the protein is actually bypass protein. So whatever the, the protein value of your silage is, not quite a quarter of it is going to be bypass protein. Now the important thing to remember there, uh, the amount of moisture in that corn silage when you harvest it, or the number of days uh, that it's been in silage, so how many days it's been in the bunker, uh, actually impacts how much of that protein is soluble in the rumen versus how much is actually bypass protein. So more days in the bunker or harvesting a wetter silage actually increases the degradability of that protein within the rumen. So if you have a really wet silage, or if you're getting close to a year out from harvest, you know, you're cleaning up the last of that silage, you're probably decreasing the amount of bypass protein that you're supplying to those calves, which is just another thing uh, to keep in mind if you're uh, formulating rations. So really the, the main points today are that those, those calves less than 700 pounds or those first few uh, months on a, a growing ration, that's when their RUP requirements or the metabolizable protein requirements are the highest. We have to be careful to always meet those every single day. And that the higher moisture corn silage or the longer that you ensile that corn silage really influences how much bypass protein you're going to have in the, in the diet. But the bottom line is corn silage is an excellent feed resource uh, for calves as long as we make sure to formulate for metabolizable protein and keep in mind that some of these amino acids or uh, specific types of protein might actually be our first limiting nutrient.